Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a walkthrough of the multiple choice section of the Advanced Hire paper from 2016. I'm going to film this in three parts. I'm going to do questions 1 to 10 in this video, 11 to 20 in the next video and 21 to 30 in the third video. So it's just to break them down a little bit so the videos aren't too long. So this first video is just going to look at the first 10 questions and um, we're going to start here with question one and I'm just going to show you how I would look at these questions and try and work out what the answer is. So this question is looking at electromagnetic radiation and asking you to work out the order of increasing wavelength. So if you're increasing wavelength then you are reducing frequency. So this question is looking at electromagnetic radiation and it's asking you to work out which of the four there um, shows the radiation bands in order of increasing wavelength. So by increasing wavelength you're reducing frequency and reducing energy. So I would just go about by possibly just starting to write out the seven electromagnetic spectrum parts from um, most energetic to least energetic. So we have gamma and then X-ray, UV, visible, IR, microwave, and radio wave. So then just compare this to the answers that you have here and you'll find that the answer to this question is C. Let's look now at question two. Which of the following states that electrons will fill orbitals um, in order of increasing energy? So for this, you just need to remember your definitions. Hunt's rule is the rule that says electrons will fill singly with parallel spins um, into degenerate orbitals before they start pairing up. The Aufbau principle, which is the answer. Aufbau is German for building up, so that is the answer. The Pauli exclusion principle is where you have electrons that are pairing, their spins must be opposite. And then finally, valence shell electron pair repulsion theory is used to work out the shape of a molecule. Here we have the periodic table and it's asking you that in the area marked X, as you go across a period, the extra electron that gets added in goes into what type of orbital? So the periodic table is split up into four sections and those sections are based on the orbital that is being filled last. So the first section is the first two columns and that is the S section. The P's fill over here, the D is in this section and the F block is down at the bottom here. So our answer to this one is D. You could look that up in your data book. You could have a look at one of the elements from here and try writing out its electronic configuration and you would find it's always a D that you're putting the electrons into last. Number four, which of the following molecules contains three atoms in a straight line? If I was to do this question, I would just go about doing the VSEPR rules for each of them and work out what shape they are. For the first one, BF3, you have three electrons plus three things that are getting added on. There's no charge, so it's just six. You do divide it by two to get the number of pairs. You have three electron pairs. Take off the number of things that are attached and you'll find that none of them are lone pairs. That means that BF3 is trigonal planar, so the bond angle here between all of them is 120 degrees. For CH4, you have four electrons on the carbon. You have four things being added on, so that's eight. Divided by two gives you four pairs. Minus the four things that are attached means you have no lone pairs. So for methane, you should already know that the structure is tetrahedral with a bond angle of about 109 degrees between each of them. Water, yeah, oxygen is your central atom, so you have six electrons plus two things attached to give you eight. You divide that by two to get four electron pairs and take off the two things that are attached to get two of those as lone pairs. So you have oxygen with the two hydrogens and then the lone pairs here at the top. The bond angle here is smaller than it would be in um, a tetrahedral, so more around about 105. So 
our answer must be uh, D. If we have a look, we've got sulfur with six things, six electrons with six things attached. So that gives us 12. And you divide that by two to get six electron pairs minus six with none of those being lone pairs. And if we just draw this up here, you've got sulfur and it's in an octahedral arrangement. So your octahedral arrangement means that you have 180 degrees between these two, between these two and these two, and then 90 degrees between all the rest. So your straight line atoms would be F, S, F. So your answer here would be D. So question five, trying to name this complex here. So if we just draw this out a little bit bigger at the bottom. So we know that the ligands always go first and they're all like that here. So this is a cyanoligand and we have six and it's hexa. And each of your cyanoligands is worth one minus. So you have six minus here. Overall, the whole thing is four minus. So your copper must be two plus. So that means that you would put in brackets a two after the copper. So you've only got a choice now between A and C. The complex itself is a minus, which means that we change it to the Latin name cuprate and we put the 8 on the end, so the answer to this one was C. Question 6, we would look at this equation and work out what's going on. I would say the best thing to do is just go through each of these in turn. So you've got HCN is acting as what? So if we have a look at the HCN, we see what happens to it when it goes over to the other side. So you have H and you have CN, and on this side we have a CN minus, which means that this has lost an electron. So that must be acting as an acid, which means the water in this case is amphoteric, so it can act as an acid or a base. So here it's acting as a base because it's accepting it. Your acid loses an H plus and whatever is left behind is your conjugate base. And your base accepts an H plus and whatever it becomes is your conjugate acid. So in this case, the HCN was acting as an acid and the answer was A. Question seven, uh, the use of an indicator is not appropriate in titrations involving what? So, so you cannot use an indicator where you have a weak acid reacting with a weak base. So a weak acid, you can find a selection of those in your data book. Um, weak bases, there isn't that many that we deal with, but they're usually ammonia or an amine of some variety. So if we have a look for weak acids in this selection here, hydrochloric acid is a strong acid and so is nitric acid. So we're left with methanoic and propanoic. And then we have to have a look at the bases. Ammonia is a weak base where sodium hydroxide is strong. So the answer to question seven is C. Question eight, which of the following can produce a buffer solution when added to aqueous NH4? Cl. So this is just knowing your definition of a buffer. So a buffer is always a weak acid with a salt of that acid or a weak base with a salt of that base. Here you have ammonium chloride which is a salt and it's based on ammonia so to produce a buffer you would have to use A ammonia for this one. Question nine, which of the following reactions cannot be described as an enthalpy of formation? So an enthalpy of formation is the formation of one mole of a substance. From its elements in standard states. So if we have a look at all of the answers, we're producing one mole of each of them. For So then we have to have a look at what is being used to produce them. So silicon would be a solid at room temperature, but chlorine, although it would be a gas, would not exist as atoms. So this is not being made from elements in its standard states. So A is our answer. Okay, finally looking at question 10. 
which of the following is likely to have the lowest standard entropy at 100 degrees? So for this, you have to have, to have a look at if something is solid, liquid or gas. Solids would have the lowest entropy, followed by liquids, then gases, and you're at 100 degrees. So you need to know if something has boiled or melted. So for a neon, you know at room temperature neon would be a gas. So it's unlikely that this is going to have a low entropy. Mercury is still a liquid at 100 degrees. Its boiling point is 357. Sulfur is a solid. Its melting point is 114, 115, and you can find that in the data book. And phosphorus is a liquid. So it has a melting point of 44 degrees and a boiling point of 280. So the lowest entropy is going to be sulphur because it is still a solid. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to stay tuned for parts two and three coming soon. Remember to subscribe, follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Kim for regular updates on new videos. See you in the next one. Bye.